Mm -hmm. Hi guys, welcome back to the Jasmine Jay Show. Today, well, let me just say it right now, viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> um, today is a very, very sensitive topic. It's actually very insane and crazy. And like, I know my topic was like, you know, very sad and sad and emotional. Emotional, and yeah, emotional. But, but this, this one is, is more emotional, very insane, makes me want to fight a few people. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm just gonna let Josh JJ. <laughs> Damn, my government out there. I know, right? <laughs> but, but you said it from the get go. So, anyways, um, I'm gonna let JJ take over now. Yeah, so everybody's been asking me for two years now about the accident. I could not speak really entirely about the full accident because, you know, I guess I was on a sort of probation type of thing. So, I'm finally free. I'm free from the situation. I am able to talk about it as I please um so that's exactly what I'm gonna do this story involves a lot of domestic violence so please 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 if you are a family and you know this story please do not watch this because you're gonna be triggered and all that stuff so so I'm advising you not to not to do that she's reading some of the actual tea okay and receipts that I got now with this being said this video is about me and my ex in our old relationship. Please, please, please do not take it any which way. Me and him are on good terms right now. This is just my side of the story um, of what happened, okay? So, me and him broke up two years ago. We broke up two years ago, and the way we broke up is he told me, like, oh, don't worry, this is just a break. You know, give me until the end of August, excuse me, to the end of August, and we'll end up back together. So me, up and there, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do this, because maybe we'll end up back together, because we always did, and I loved him. But I would get hit all the time. Don't get me wrong, I have put my hands on him, you know, and he does have marks for me, too. But what I have been through is way more, way more. So anyways... It got to the point, let me fast forward, it got to the point where I was working all the time, all right, all the freaking time with my son Whitney, and he would just charge me to take me to work. He would not work. He wasn't paying for nothing, all right, but he also had the audacity and, you know, family, too, had the audacity to expect me to keep house, keep everything clean, keep this, this, that, and the other. In my opinion, and that's my opinion, and my husband's opinion, so that's saying a lot, okay? If somebody is working, it's your job to make sure the house is kept, especially if your kid is there. If your kid is living in a certain area, you don't like how messy it is, you clean it, all right? So it was so disgusting because I was working all the time. I would come home, but I would be so tired, so exhausted that I would just go to sleep. All right, I'll just clear out my bed and go to sleep. On my yeah, side. I'm so angry right now. Oh She's my god, spot. I'm so angry right yeah. now. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna cry. Yeah, this is crazy. That's not when I tell you I'm the strongest bitch you will ever meet. I mean it because I've been through some shit. All right, some deep, deep, deep shit. All right, so he would charge me money back and forth um, to take me for the ride. Kind of like an Uber. He would charge me gas. All right. He would charge me for the groceries. Okay. He wouldn't help me with groceries even if his son is eating it. All right. Everything. And like also, if I want to do a family outing for my son, he'll be like, oh, then can you get me this sweater or can you get me this thing? Like he wouldn't do things unless I did something for him. You know? To me, that's ridiculous because... My heart is so big. Let, let me tell you something. If he needed me, I would drop everything and I would be there for him. Because he's my son's father. And I want to make sure he is okay no matter what. So, I don't understand why, why this happened. And maybe it's because I was just, you know, I wanted to keep the family unit. But it just wasn't right. So, we had one altercation where it was just like the end of the rope. And I was just like, you know what? I can't do this no more. I can't do this no more. I got to leave. All right. So they were threatening me, you know, him and the family like, oh, we're going to get the best Lord. Don't worry. You're not going to, 
you're not gonna um, lose him, blah, 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 blah. And I told, I told him like, listen, I just want primary custody. I'm not trying to take him from you. You can see him whenever you want. I just can't be here no more. And he can't stay with you because you keep bringing this little girl that you're seeing into the house. I will come home and like my glasses will be broken. Everything will be broken. I will have stuff missing out of my room, okay? um panties on the floor like they were making known they were there okay all right and they're eating the stuff that i'm providing and buying for for them for for them basically because it, for them when i said for them i meant for for him and my son but they're eating the stuff like it's theirs it's ridiculous so at some point he moved upstairs i was downstairs so let's go back to the incident um i was working all day i tell him can you come pick me up he was like oh i'm out with her right now blah 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 and I was like, all right, I'm tired. I'm just going to walk to my mom's house. So I was working from 6 a.m. I would get there at 5.30, but basically 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., all right? And then I walked to my mom's house because I was so tired, and my son wanted to see my family. So we went over there, and I waited until 11 o'clock. I went home. I cooked dinner for my son and for him and for him. And then I went downstairs, I texted him, I was like, listen, I'm thirsty, can I go upstairs to your room, can I get some water? He had water bottles in his room. And he was like, yeah, come up. I go upstairs, and you know, you have a woman's intuition. You feel something, you feel it, it's there, all right? You know something's going on. So I go in, I grab a water bottle, and I see a glare in the window, and a shawty's over there in the window. She's outside. And I'm like, Ryan. I'm like, what? Ryan. I didn't say a name. Okay, I'm just saying Ryan. Yeah, I know. That's his name right now. His name is Ryan. So, yeah. So, I'm like, Ryan, who's over there? Ryan. And he's playing coy. He's playing dumb. Mind you, I have warned this girl, you know, before. I was like, listen, we still do stuff and blah, blah, blah. Don't be with him because it's not good. It's not good. I'm like, yeah, that's another story and that's going to be next week. All right? But... Because before all, all this stuff hit the fan, it was, I was too nice, too nice. So, she still is too nice. Yeah. I am, I am too nice, but that's just my character. So, anyways, keep in mind, I did my dirt too. I did my dirt too, but nothing compared to what I've been doing. Okay? So, and this is not to put you down. I'll still always be there for you. you. You know, you follow my son. You know, this is just my part of the story. So, and so let's let's do one thing clear. Let's let's make one thing clear. I do have memory loss ever since this accident. It took two years of therapy, two years of psychology, two years of all this stuff that I had to go through to bring back memories. Okay. And after that, after a while, I finally went and I got the I went and I got the receipts, the stuff that I was missing, all right? To prove my innocence, you know? Unfortunately, this is too expensive to even fight. So I just dropped it all out. But anyways, I I see the girl in the in the thing and I then I see panties and I'm like, "Yo, who are you kidding me?" Like, you got me fucked up. And he gets up and he watches me. He's like, Jay, don't start. Jay, don't start. And I'm like, Ryan, you got me fucked up. This ain't cool. I just came home from work. I just made you dinner. And like, I'm tired and I'm over here for you. And you over here doing me that dirt. So, so I went. I went. Um, He's walking me out of his room. He's like, don't do anything. Don't do, don't do anything stupid. And I was like, I'm going to go downstairs, get my Tims, and I'm going to fuck her up. So I go downstairs. I check my son. He's already asleep. He's in bed. I give him a kiss, and I tuck him in. I put on my shoes, and I'm like, I'm going to go upstairs. And I forgot what I said. I think I said I'm going to stomp on her face or something like that. All right? And then I went upstairs. Now, here's the thing. His, the door he went, the, the place he was sleeping, the room, it's broken. So you need a knife to open the door. So I grabbed two knives because sometimes certain knives don't work. I grabbed two knives. It was like a, a very dull steak knife and a butter knife. And I opened the thing. Um, but before I opened the thing, I was knocking, knocking, knocking. He wouldn't open the door. So I tried to open the thing. 
this is where it gets crazy. The first thing he does when he opens the door is he punches me in the face. He punches me in the face and he pushes me to the point where I almost fall. Okay. And I'm like, so like shocked. And I look and the girl is sitting behind him laughing on the bed, on his bed. So I'm pushing, pushing, trying to get through to her, pushing him, pushing and pushing him while he's literally smacking me, punching me, grabbing me by the hair, trying to move me. At this point, he tries to grab the knife out of my hand. And I was like, no, because he has threatened me before and told me before how he's going to kill me. Okay? How he's going to kill me. And I'm like, no. No, 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 uh, no, I'm not going to give you these knives. What, so you can kill me? Hell no, I'm not stupid. So, she's still cackling in the back, you know, all that stuff. And I don't know what happened from here, but he was, at this point, he's on this side of me, right? On this side. Now he's on this side in front of me, in front of his door, and he's like, oh, you just stabbed me. And I'm like, I did not stab you, okay? Now here... I don't have memory loss, but some things are so vivid, you don't forget. I didn't see any blood. I didn't see any blood, okay? Now, I could be wrong. I don't remember, but I didn't see any blood. No blood, okay? So, he's calling upstairs to his family. He's like, oh, she stabbed me. She stabbed me. And I'm like, I'm going to call the police. So, I'm because I'm like, I'm fed up. I'm done. You keep hitting me. You keep defending this girl who's, like, been stealing my stuff breaking my stuff like i'm tired of this so i'm running downstairs i'm already like almost halfway through to in, in the staircase all right this is a carpeted staircase all right so it's not easy to fall down and there's a rail so i'm holding on to the rail and he runs downstairs calling me names all right and he's punching me he's punching me in the head he's tugging my hair you know, trying to push me down the stairs, but I'm holding onto the railroad on my mind, so he's not, he can't push me down easy, all right? So he, um, each step he's punching me, all right? So now we're like only four steps, like four or five steps above from the ground, right? So he punches me one time really, really good right here, and I start feeling blood come out of my ears okay punches me one time really good blood's coming out my ears this time i'm blacking out all right and then he kicks me he kicks me one good time down the stairs as soon as he kicked me i blacked out i saw myself falling and i didn't feel myself hit the ground now from his story on he said that he um he had you know caused he, he he went to me started crying because he expected me to he expected me to you know get up and try to find him back like usual but that's just not how it happened because you know he would hit me a lot and i would always get back up i'm really strong you know but he wasn't expecting me to not get up so he you know runs down to me and he's crying and He's like, Jay, get up, get up, get up, please. You know, he's saying, I love you, all this stuff. Like, please wake up. He's scared. At this point, I have blood running out of my ears. All right. Um, I have blood coming out everywhere, basically. All right. Um, he said that my eyes were swollen and they were like, you know, this is like a, it was a horrible scene. It was a horrible scene. I was bleeding out of my head. It was really bad. It was really bloody. And um, he thought I died. All right. So he's claiming that, you know, my son didn't wake up during this whole incident. Mind you, the staircase is right here and our bedroom is right here, me and my sons. Mm. And he's claiming that he didn't get up. I pray to God that's the truth because that really, that kills me, you know? So fast forward, I don't know how I ended up in the ambulance. He said that they call the ambulance, whatever, right? He said that he had to go to Fairfax and he had to, he had to get stitches right here. That's where he's claiming I stabbed him. He did get stitches. I don't know how that got there because I don't remember stabbing him. I don't remember that happening. Okay? What? So y'all were arguing over a knife? 
overnight. I was holding it because he wanted to take it away from me. And then during that, he somehow got stabbed. Yeah. Okay. Well, he was bound to get stabbed. Somebody was bound to get stabbed. <laughs> You're playing with a knife at that point. Yeah. So, so we're so I'm at the hospital. I start waking up. All right. Like in and out. And I see somebody, and I thought it was my mom, and I'm like, mommy, mommy. And then when I realized who it was, it was his mom. Let's call her Samantha. And I'm like, Samantha, where's my son? And she's crying, and she's like, I'm so sorry this happened to you. And I'm like, Samantha, where's my son? Where's my son? You know, I can't move. I'm paralyzed at this moment. I'm paralyzed. I can't move anything. All right, but I'm just like, where's my son? Where's my son? And I had no feeling in my legs, in my arms, in my neck, nothing. And I didn't know I had a brace on my on my neck either, but I did. Okay. And she just kept crying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I was like, it's okay. Where's my son? Because I'm just scared. I'm trying to work with her because I want to see my son. I didn't realize I was in the hospital. But then I see my mom run in crying. I hear some commotion going out. I don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure my parents cursed them out. All right. And she left. His mom left. And then my mom comes in and she's hysterical crying. She's crying. And she's like, oh, my God, my baby. I'm so sorry. And I, oh, my God, I'm going to start crying. And I start, I'm like, mom, you wears where's Jace? That's my son. I'm like, mom, where's Jace? Okay. And she's like, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Mind you, my mom doesn't know where he is right now. She's just telling me this, like, calm down. And my dad is crying next to me on this side. My mom is on this side. And he's over here, like, putting my hair. But there's blood on his hands. Okay. And the doctors are telling them. Your daughter's going to die. Okay? She has a 30% chance to live. So you guys should start calling funeral homes. Okay? Taylor, you guys should go call funeral homes because she is going to die. She has a fracture in her skull close to her brain. Okay? And she won't stop bleeding. Okay, so it's a very thin chance that she is going to live. So, fast forward um, a couple minutes because I was in and out, in and out, all right? Um, the doctors told my parents, we have to take her now. So, the last thing I told my mom as they pulling me out, I don't know where I am. All I know is that I'm tired. I don't want to go to sleep. Okay. I look at my mom and I'm like, this is, this is how you know at that moment all I was thinking about was my son. I was just like, mommy, Jace is in danger. You need to go get him. And she's like, okay. And I was like, at the very last second, I said, he likes Peppa Pig. Okay. Peppa Pig. Patrol, chicken nuggets, and strawberries. Make sure you give him that. And she was like, okay. And she said, okay. Right? She said, okay. And then I didn't wake up until the next morning. And the next morning, I thought, you know, I was at home i go like this and i'm handcuffed to the rail i'm confused i've never been arrested in my life and they're like oh well you know you're arrested because this is that and the other and the first police that were there were assholes but one of them was really nice was, whoever you are thank you for being there for me through this situation because <laughs> When I tell y'all, like, I was praying to die. Like, I did not want to live anymore because I was scared because my son's father's family has money that I don't have. My family is very poor and we're from New York, okay? And I was terrified because of all the threats, okay? And I was like, you guys don't understand. I have to go to work. I'm the only one that's there for him, 
okay i'm the only one that's paying for this stuff i need to go to work where's my son where's my son they're like we don't know where he is we don't know where he is i'm sorry but you have to stay still i try to get up and but i was in so much pain i had no idea that that i had a fucking fracture right here okay i was half deaf but there was so much adrenaline for my son that I was like, no, I gotta go, I gotta go. So they put sleeping shit in my IV so I can go to sleep. And when I woke up again, I was like, I want my son, where's my son? I couldn't stop talking about him. And I started talking and I'm like, like, y'all don't understand. I don't remember a lot of things that I was saying, but I remember just talking about my son. And I was like, like, y'all don't understand. Like, I've been being here for like five years now, okay? But at the same time, I was like, I love him. Please don't arrest him because I love him so much. Because I had so much love for this man still, even though I knew what happened last night. I didn't remember much, so I was just like, please don't arrest him. Just give him my kid and let me go. I was paralyzed, you guys. I was paralyzed, and I had no idea that I was not going to move, okay? So, <clears throat> so, a couple of days after that, all right, my mom randomly walked in i swear it was like an angel was walking in when i saw my mom yo i didn't see anybody for days except nurses pricking at me and ct scans and heart scans like so much bullshit okay because they were scared i was gonna die i don't know why i didn't die okay because i was supposed to i was supposed to die but I swear to God, it was my love for my son that was holding me together, okay? So, so, um, oh my God, I can't, it's too much. So, she comes in. I don't know what I was signing, but she comes in and she's like, I need you to sign this so I can get J's. And my mom is crying and they only allowed her to come in for that second and I'm just crying. I'm like, mommy, I miss J's. I'm like, I want J's. Like, please just give me my son. Like, what did I do to deserve this? Like, why are you taking my son from me? I didn't do anything to deserve this. Okay? Like, like you made me think that we were going to be okay at some point. Okay? And now you're trying to take my kid. And my mom is over here like, I need you to sign this. I know you. it's hard for you to move and you can't move. But please, if you can just pick up this pen and sign this so I can get your son. So that's what I did. With the little bit of strength I had, I sat up really slowly. And all the nurses and doctors were like fucking shocked because I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. Okay. But I still have movements in my arms and my hands. So I tried to get up and they're like, no, stay still. You know, you have fractures and like you're fragile. And I'm like, fuck, I want my son. So I signed it and my mom gave me a big kiss and she left. And I didn't see my mom for like almost a week after that. Okay. So the, then the next, that night, these two different officers come in and they're so cruel. They're laughing at me, and it was this one black officer and this white girl, and he's flirting with her, and I'm over here crying about my son, and they're over here laughing at me, like, you did it to yourself, blah, 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 and the next day, I just, they were trying to feed me because I couldn't eat, they moved me, they moved me into a chair. At this point, I'm getting movement in one of my legs. So they're trying to get me walking, okay? Like, oh my God, I was in so much pain that they realized it's not going to happen. She cannot feel a whole other side of her. How is she going to? We can't. We can't force her. So now I'm in a wheelchair. So they're moving me. These two, this one lady, I think she's like white or Spanish or something. She had glasses and brown hair. She's tall. And then this older black 
um, cop, you guys are the sweetest people ever. Like, these people grab my hands and they're praying with me so I can get my son back, okay? And I'm just a bucket of tears. Like, please, like, I'm so sorry for whatever I did. I just want my son. Like, I don't remember anything, okay? They were like, after you eat, we have to take you to jail. And I was like, why? Why are you taking me to jail? I don't deserve this shit, okay? So they get up and they try to move me as gently as possible into this tiny ass cop car and I was in so much pain. And they took their time. They turned on the siren and they drove i swear to god they were driving like probably two miles an hour to the fucking jailhouse so that way i wasn't in pain and when i got there they were like she's a good girl this is a mistake and she don't belong here like take care of her right so <laughs> my husband just walked in hi babe hi it's a good thing you walked in because i'm too emotional right now so, they take me into jail. The officer, they take the picture. And then, you know, there's always those people that work in the jail. You know, they've been there for so long that they work there. So, they take me, but I'm so exhausted. They forced me to walk. What's even up, though. Bro? What's up, bro? How are we going to edit? No, you just going to. I told you something's going to Well, it's mommy's okay. turn. Because, uh, so. When I so we go we take the picture and all that stuff and then this one security guard this older white man who lost a thumb from somebody stabbing it off of him some other person there he goes and he gets three beds at the jail put it there and a bunch of pillows and pops me up and he prays for me too and he brings me extra food and then i looked at him and i was like i don't want to pray to live Okay, because I don't want to live no more. I'm tired. I'm tired. All right, but then my mom went and got me a lawyer with one of my best friends to get me out. So they got me out within a week. Okay. And then I go and I find out he filed for temporary custody of my son he goes and he takes my son for me okay he takes matter of fact i have the receipts over here somewhere all right he goes and he takes my son for me um we're gonna try to find that but yeah he got temporary custody oh it's right here so he put a protective order it says, um, we can't even show you guys. Sorry. I can't show you, but I can read it to you. All right. In regards to Jace, I'm not going to say his last name because then y'all would know. Um, and then the name of the mother, Jocelyn, Judy, Arguedas, and then Ryan. So it says, protective order against mother. Um, I don't even, right, yeah. Protective order against mother in regarding to a pending case of malicious wounding. Stability for a child to remain in his home in his home since birth. Have the child currently physically under my care since birth. Mother is physically slash financially unable to care for the child. So, mind you, before this happened, I was the only one paying. I was the only one paying for my son's stuff, okay? So, other than him being able to put a roof over his head, at this point, I'm like, what are you talking about? I can stay at my mom's house with my son, right? So, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to stay with my son, okay? We went to court, and he told the prosecutor, the person that's trying to get me arrested, said it was a mistake. It was a bad fight, and it was a mistake. All right? 
So they lowered it to um, trespassing. And I know a lot of y'all are going to be like, what the hell? You were living in that house for so many years. And yes, I was. But it's better than getting arrested for malicious wounding, which is what I was being arrested for. Right? So with that being said, that was the story of the accident. All right? But because of all this happening, I ended up homeless with our son okay i ended up homeless with our son because he um because he he and i were not jewish and my parents are jewish and they were like you need to convert or you need to go and i was like i'm not gonna convert but i'm also not gonna go you're not gonna just do that to me but they did they were like no you don't like what you're doing with your life so you need to get out so I was actually homeless in New York for two whole months back and forth and I was couch surfing everywhere. Um, my son's father knew this, all right? Nobody cared, nobody cared. And then it's just so much, it was just so much. And then finally, I ended up with somebody in New York dating somebody, um, I'm not gonna say his name. But he tried. He just couldn't. He couldn't give me and my son a home. And we needed a home. You know. But we were still together. And then one of my old bosses was like. Oh I live in Maryland. Come live with us. You know. I work for me for free. And I'll give you a place to stay. So I was sleeping on her couch. But the situation was also so abusive. She was abusing me living there. And trying to make me into her slave. Okay. So then that's when my husband came around and he was like, listen, I can provide for you a home. I can provide for you food and a family. And these are all things that you don't have right now and you don't have many options. And I'm not saying he never said that in a way like, oh, he, he was never like, I'm a dangle this in your face. And he never has. He has never come to me and said, oh, you wouldn't be here if it was for me. Because, no, that's never happened. He's never done that. All right? So, I took that chance. I took that chance, and now me and him are married. Now me and him are married, and now we're in a so much better place, you know? Um, but before I end this video, I'm going to show you some proof of the shit that I went through. This is a lot, and I don't want anybody to get pissed off and angry and all this stuff, but I'm sorry. Like, I went through too much. I went through too much, so. So, these are some videos. I mean, videos. In, in this video, well, these were videos, actually, but my old friend snapshotted it. All right, these are, like, bruises on the forehead. This is the same, like, hour that I was, like, hit. Okay, black eyes, like, it was a lot, um, nose fracture right here, I've been through a lot, I'm not going to show y'all everything because it is so much, um, like, we're going to have to make this a part two, and I'll get into other stories, but I've been through a lot, um, before I I also, before I end the video, I want to read to you something that came from the hospital. The one that it says, um, I was pushed down the stairs. Can I read this one? Yeah. Where is it? It's not this one. That was after. Yeah. No, that's the one that he said. The it's one right here. I put everything that kind of, um, uh, okay. it's right here. Then, huh? So, actually, it was a doctor that wrote down that I was... There you go. Okay. So I want you guys to know this was literally last year, so not that long ago. Yeah. Now. Hold on, Jace. Go over there for now, okay? Hold on. Go over there for now. Okay, knock on the door. Mo will let you in. Like I said, whenever he comes in, we're not going to really, you know, talk like that. Even if you hear him, I promise you he's pretty far away. Okay, so he's not, like, hearing anything. Okay. So this one says JJ, well it says her government name, but JJ is a 22 year old female who presents to the hospital 
on April 28, 2018 with acute head energy injury. She apparently stabbed her boyfriend who then pushed her down the stairs. So with that being said, no, I did not fall down the stairs. I was pushed down the stairs, but more than that, I was kicked. I was kicked down the stairs and that I specifically remember. I want that to be known because I, I am not lying. I have never lied about this. Okay, I have always been truthful about this and I'm not slandering anybody's name. I'm just telling you my part. Well, this, we didn't say anybody's name. Yeah. If you know who she's talking about, you just know who she's yeah. talking about. And if that's the case, you probably know the story already yeah. or pieces of it. Um, yeah. And that wasn't everything. There's so much like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, there is text messages, pictures, doctor stuff. There's so much, like, when you're scared to lose your kid, you do whatever you can. But to the people who are close to him, who are probably going to watch this tonight, just so you know, me and him are on good terms. This is nothing against him. This is a nothing against you. We're on good terms right now. I will always be there for you because you are the father of my son. I will always have love for you because... You gave me a beautiful little boy, okay? I would never take him from you. And I would never say, oh, you can never see your son again or nothing like that. I'm not that person. I have never been that person, all right? And if you ever need me, I'm there. This is just my side of the story. You really, really affected me. And it's been killing me and hurting me for seven years now. And this, I just needed to, people need to hear this because people are going through this right now and they're stuck. They don't know what to do. I'm telling you, if you're watching this right now and you're being abused emotionally, physically, it does not matter. If he's giving you the, if he's making you feel scared, leave. It's not worth and it. And if you can't leave, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody so Reach we can help us. You. Yes. We will help you. We Just have been let appreciate. somebody like, know. Yeah. So that you're taking that first step exactly. to get a hold of your life, you know? Yeah. Because... Why would you stay in that situation for so long? I'm tw I know this is talking. <laughs> I'm 23 years old. I'm 23 years old, and I'm just now getting my shit together. But it took for that one incident. Like I said, it was last year. Like that shit happened last year. Yeah. So it took that incident for shit to actually like. And you know what? On top of that, on top of all that crap that I went through, I really think this was God because. If it, yeah, it's it's sad. The situation is sad. But if it wasn't for God letting this happen, I would still be there. I would have not met my husband and I would still be fucked up in a bunch of bullshit, you know? So I'm happy because now I'm able to see my son, all right? His father is able to see his son. We have joint custody right now. Um, we're on good terms right now. We're not fighting, thank God. Um... You know, we talk about this a lot, actually, me and him. We try not to because it's a very touchy subject. But um, that's just, that's what happened. Like I said, I don't remember stabbing him. Um, if I did, I am sorry. Um, wrong is wrong. There's no going around it. But I didn't deserve to, to get hit. I didn't deserve to be talked to like that. I didn't deserve to come home with shit broken and stolen and, you know. Like I said, I've hit him too. I've left marks on him too. But I have, I am, okay. So I'm half deaf in this ear, half blind in this ear. I have a skull fracture. I have a, yeah, I have a fracture right here, a fracture right here, a uh, broken chest plate right here. It's just now starting to heal, okay? Um, not this side, it's this side. Um, fracture right here, two fractures on my ribs, a fracture on the top of my spine and the bottom of my spine. My body is screwed for life. For life. I might not be ever able to hear or see properly in my life again. Okay? This has literally stopped so much time in my life that I've lost that I'm never going to get again. So please, if you're going through anything like this, whether it's your mom, your sister, whether it's your brother abusing the girlfriend, because I got family members too that's abusive too, and I'm not defending them. Wrong is wrong, all right? If you need somebody to talk to, please come to us. It could be anonymously, 
We won't we won't put your name out there or nothing. All right. And if it, if you don't want to come to us, there is places that will help, and we actually might put those down below. Yeah. Okay. So please, 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 please. I hope this helps you. This was very emotional. Honestly, I'm gonna stop this video and start crying even more. Um. So. Yeah. But once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Part two of this saga will be next Thursday. And <laughs> let me tell you, with the stuff that I got here, you're going to be mad. People are going to be angry. All right? A lot of people. I just said I was angry yeah. at the beginning of the video. But, like, so. super, super, like, yeah, like it's going to be a lot. Like, bitch ass nigga, meet me outside. <laughs> Please, I don't want to go back to jail. I'm okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It would be me. Yeah. <laughs> and my, my posse. Okay? <laughs> okay! But nah, on a serious note, um, with all that being said and everything I've been through, I would never put myself in that situation again. Never. I love when people learn from experiences. It, yeah. it just, it really does grow you. It, it you only took person. me almost dying. <laughs> you know, but it's yeah. okay. But Literally. sometimes that's what it takes. So. Yeah, it's really sad. But we hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please press the button over there in the corner for our notifications. Follow our social media account. And share this video because it share. can really help yeah. somebody. Definitely. I'm sorry that this video is long. Trust me, if I would have kept going, Oh my it gosh, so all the people that complained about my video, y'all will survive. This right. one was way more interesting. So And heartfelt. Yes. Really heartfelt. Yeah. So enjoy enjoy and stay tuned for tuesday for part two of the beginning ah. all right we'll, <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later bye, bye.